thought of the majority of urban dwellers is that they cannot possibly afford to buy a home due to price, cost, credit issues. Just remember that 52.6% of Philadelphians were homeowners in 2015. Believe in the possibility that you can own a home. Okay. Now, my name is Monica Wright. I've been a realtor for the past more than 25 years. I've probably been a realtor for like 27 years. And uh, I have a community group that does now does real estate investing. Uh, I used to own four daycares and that's how I first got into real estate. And I bought the buildings and I put daycares in each of my buildings. And now I am quote unquote retired, which means I just live my life, do what I want, come in here when I want. I homeschool my grandkids. I do a lot of different stuff. Um, usually community orientated, okay? Um, I do a real estate series. Uh, and I call it keeping it real estate. Okay, so just keeping it real about how real estate impacts us. Okay, I had five kids. I had bad credit. I was on section eight and I got my real estate license and I said it, There was a point in time when me and my kids were living out of my car. I was moved from Jersey to Philadelphia My section eight house didn't pass the inspection. I had all my stuff in a U-Haul truck and they said they weren't coming back to reinspect for 30 days. So I spent 30 days in a car with five kids, laundry in the back, sitting in the park with the two little ones while three went to school for 30 days. And I said I will never ever be homeless again. And what I did, because I had my real estate license, I remember I was working for Dumphy Sells Real Estate, which back then there was a point in time in Philly where you could be on SSI and buy a house, okay? It was that good. It was that rolling. The government was really committed to get people in houses. They had the dollar, dollar, <coughs> dollar the dollar house program. And so I picked out the worst house in the city in the MLS for the lowest price. And the lowest price house in the whole city was a house on Reach Street in Kensington. And it was listed for 18200 with a $4,000 selling bonus. It was just a raggedy house, but it had a door, it had windows, it had a heater, everything was working. And I bought it. And I got back $4,000, so I ended up paying $14,000 for it. My mortgage was $186 a month. I gave up my Section 8, and then I started buying houses. And in every house, I put a family daycare home. So for 12 years, I was making about $24,000. Stop using credit. Stop using credit. Stop. Okay? Stop using credit. It'll, it'll really change your life. Okay? And whatever you have now as far as maybe old utility bills from places where you used to live, old Verizon, um, old medical bills, you really don't ever have to pay a credit cleaning, credit counseling. Don't do it. All you got to do is make a deal with all your creditors. Okay, so let's say, let's say you got your check and you got an extra $150, okay? And you look back on your credit and you remember that cell phone you helped your boy get and then he didn't pay the bill. So it was $175. Okay, and they've been calling you and bugging you and whatever, and you got that little extra $150. Call them up, say, I want to settle. Yeah, no, you don't need a payment plan. Let me tell you what you do. You want to settle it. It's $175. Tell them you got $75 today. Okay? What you want from them is a letter that says, tell them to send it to your email. I'm settling this $175 debt for $75 today. They usually give you about 15 days to send them the $75. So they send you the letter and get the money order, send them the $75, you're done. Your credit score is going to go up. That's all you got to do. Uh, if you owe $250, offer them $150. Okay? Um, if you have old medical bills, like, like me, I've always been on medical assistance my whole life, no matter how much money I was making because I had five kids. 
All you gotta do is get your medical assistance number if you if you have that, and call up and give it to them, and the medical bill will go away. Usually, what happens is we go to emergency and we don't have our card. Okay, so any kind of you can call up and make the deal. Don't pay somebody else. All they're going to do is take your money and pay their bills. You dig what I'm saying? So if somebody wants to charge you $50, $75 for credit repair a month, you can do your own credit repair. Just call up the creditor and make a deal with them. Usually, if it's $250, they'll take $150, and they'll knock off the $100. Okay? If you owe $150, usually they'll take $75. Okay? Sometimes they have a percentage, but it's never the whole amount. Now, my daughter cleared up all her credit with just one paycheck. You know, she just was really committed to go ahead and get it done. And she made a deal with every credit card, an old Verizon bill and all that, and got it done. And she said her credit went up. She has the Credit Karma app, which she said is free. Yeah, it went up like 13 points. And she paid each of those bills off. So definitely do that. That's all you have to do. Where could you get like a list or like where, where would you be able to tell like, all right, this is everything that I owe? Okay. Um, every person is entitled to a free credit report once a year, but the internet is so sneaky. So you gotta be a little careful. Look up the one, um, it, is it called free credit report or something? Free credit report. Free credit yeah, yeah, but read read before you do whatever they say okay they shouldn't ask you for a credit card or anything like that in order to give you the information uh, that you need to get a copy of all three of your credit reports and i know that the right site that you go to they ask you a series of questions about debt and mortgage and things like that that you might have had and sometimes they'll send it right to you in email yeah you'll get access to all your credit reports so um, let me start you guys off because I, you didn't hear the introduction or anything. I didn't talk about much, and I could probably knock it out in one minute. And then I'd like to know who you guys are, but I'm Monica Wright. I've been a realtor for about 27 years. Um, I try to teach everybody you don't have to have money, good credit, or anything, at least in the city of Philadelphia, to eventually own it. All you need is a plan, okay? Um, we got to remember that things are drastically changing. Philly is like the wild, wild west, okay? When people went across the west, people started farms, people started banks, people started stores. They looked at the community and said, how can I serve it? When I got my building in Kensington, the first thing I did was I got my family daycare home license. So now I can stay home. I was making, uh, I, my, my first family of clients, the girl had five kids. They were paying me 3000 a month to watch her kids. You know what I'm saying? It was the first time I ever got $3,000. That was like 20 years ago. I was like, oh my God. I thought, I, and, and, and it rose till I was making $24,000 a month. Um, you can look at properties and try to think, what can you do to work from home to generate money? Um, and, and to give you a brief story before I said I was going to stick to my agenda here, but I have a real estate investing group, and I know you've probably seen, seen me talk about it online. We, we have invested $10,000 in this house on 48th Street. And I keep looking at it, and I said, it has a driveway, and it has a front porch. A small family could, if you divided the first floor and used the living room, put a kitchen in it, and you have access to the third floor, you got your bedrooms, your bathroom, your kitchen, your sitting area, and the porch. Then in the back, you put a door and some type of business, massage business, um, essential oils, uh, hair, do hair, whatever, and you can still have a small little loft area where you come in the dining room kitchen. Be, so you can have a single person or a, or a family with a business and you can just walk around the driveway and use that. Very 
different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding so many, so many different mentalities that it, 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 it seems hard. It seems challenging. It's challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge.